Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another video. This time we will be doing two-dimensional conservation of momentum. Now just as a general problem-solving strategy as always you should draw a picture labeling as much as you can and for these types of problems you're actually going to be doing conservation of momentum twice. Once will be in the x-axis and once will be in the y-axis. You have to understand that the problems we've been focusing on have had collisions that are in one dimension, in a straight line. They are either colliding while moving towards each other or colliding while moving in the same direction. The problems that we will be doing will be at angles. And as you know already from your previous experience, when dealing with vectors at angles, we use cosine for the x-axis and sine for the y-axis. So this will be familiar to you. Often you end up with two equations and two unknowns. If this is the case, then I would strongly suggest using substitution. So what we're going to do is start with a sample problem. Please be aware that the problems that we're going to do for this video involve collisions that are at 90 degrees to each other. So we're going to start off sort of friendly. In this case, a football player running east tackles and holds on to a football player running north. And we want to know their velocity immediately after the collision. And please remember that velocity is speed with direction, so we're going to be solving for angle as well. Again, pause the video at any time to write down this problem. And we will start with a picture. We have object A moving to the right and object B moving up. I've labeled their velocities. Afterwards, they stick together, so this would be a perfectly inelastic collision, and they move it at some unknown angle and some no, unknown final velocity. I said earlier that you will be doing conservation momentum in the X and the Y. So we start off with the X, and in the X axis, we have the 80 kilogram mass moving at 4 meters per second. The angle it's moving at is actually 0 degrees because it's horizontal, so we do cosine of 0. Whereas object B is moving straight up, so that's an, actually an angle of 90 degrees. Some of you, as you get more experience with these problems, may just put this as 0. Like instead of writing 60 times 3 times cosine 90, you just may put 0 there because cosine of 90 is 0. Afterwards, they are stuck together. So I've added their masses, and they have a final velocity at some unknown angle. So we've written that as Vf cosine theta. The best you can do is reduce this down to Vf cosine theta equals 2.29 meters per second. We have one equation here with two unknowns. <coughs> Excuse me. For the y-axis, we use sine. The 80 kilogram mass is moving to the right so at zero degrees, sine of zero is zero. In the future, some of you may just put zero here and then write plus 60 times three sine 90. They are stuck together, so we add their masses together times the final velocity times the sine of an unknown angle. The best we can do here is reduce this down to Vf sine theta equals 1.29 meters per second. So at this point, we're left with two equations and two unknowns. You actually have seen this before in the past. It's going to require substitution. What I would really suggest doing is solving for Vf in the x-axis. And you'll be left with 2.29 meters per second over cosine theta. And then you can substitute this in for the Vf in the y. And you'll be left with 2.29 meters per second over cosine times sine. You've seen this before. We've done it many times this year. Sine over cosine is tangent. So we rearrange. We get tangent of theta is 1.29 over 2.29, where theta is the inverse tangent of 0.563, and we get that theta is 29.39 degrees. So this is the direction they are moving. If you then take this theta, this angle, and you substitute it back in above, you can solve for Vf, and you will see that Vf is 2.63 meters per second. On to our next problem. We're going to stay with the football players, but this time they are bouncing off each other. And you can read the problem on your own. But in general, they bounce off. You got one running east, one running north. 
and we want to know the initial velocity of the 80 kilogram player and the final velocity of the 60 kilogram player. Again, please feel free to pause the video to write down the problem and perhaps even set up your picture. So here we have the two players running towards each other. The 80 kilogram player has an unknown initial velocity. Afterwards, they bounce off each other. We know the angles they're moving at, but we don't know the final velocity of object B. So again, here we go. We set up our x. This is momentum in the x, as you can see here. Using cosine for x. I'm not going to read it all to you because you'll pass out with boredom. But when you reduce it down, you are left with one equation and two unknowns. No big deal. Move on to the y-axis. As you can see here, we've done the same thing, except that it's sine. Now, at first, it may appear that we have one long equation and two unknowns. But as it turns out, the first term, the 80 kilograms, initial velocity of object A, sine 0, well, the sine of 0 is 0, so that term actually drops out, and the only thing we don't know in this long expression is the final velocity of B. So we're actually able to solve for the final velocity of B, which is great because then we could simply substitute it into our expression above and solve for the initial velocity of A. So it wasn't as bad as it may seem because this substitution involved a number, but you never know. You may be having two equations with two unknowns and have to do substitution with variables. So just some extra tips as you're doing these problems. Watch for directions, especially for the x-axis. Please remember that to the right is positive and to the left is negative. For the y-axis, up is positive, down is negative. I know it seems silly, but when you're talking about x, focus on right and left. And when you're talking about y, focus on up and down. When solving for the angle, and you'll get this problem a few times, it's usually easier to substitute from the x into the y. And this way, you'll end up with sine over cosine, which is tangent. If you do it the other way, you end up with cosine over sine, which is cotangent. And some people mess up the math there when that happens. Also, be aware, this, these problems we did didn't involve this. But when, when we're solving for direction and we, we're talking about angle, it's remember that the second and third quadrant, you have to add 180 degrees. And the fourth quadrant, you have to add 360. If you're not sure about this, I would check back to your notes of projectile motion where we've discussed this in the past. And finally, remember that you, we will probably connect these problems to other topics as, as we have done in the past. Most likely, it will involve a skid. And these problems are involved enough, so I don't think we're going to go too crazy connecting the other topics. If you're inspired, please feel free to check out the three problems that involve collisions at 90 degrees to each other. Otherwise, we'll be working on these problems tomorrow in class.